So you bumped your head. Let me take a look. Hmm. Yeah, I see it here. But you know what? I don't think we're going to have to worry too much about any brain injuries. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of www.doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 600 now articles, videos, and podcasts on medical preparedness. I am also the author, along with my lovely wife, Amy, of the Amazon bestseller, The Survival Medicine Handbook, as well as the Ebola Survival Handbook, and also the brand new board game, Doom and Bloom Survival, a great Christmas gift to get the whole family together and put down those iPhones and have a lot of fun. You know, you've been hearing a lot about concussions lately, especially in sports, but they can occur while on the trail, in the car, while biking, or many other instances. You know, luckily most head injuries only result in a laceration to the scalp or a swelling at the site of impact. Cuts on the head and face tend to bleed and there are many small blood vessels that travel through this area. And this bleeding, although significant, doesn't have to signify internal damage. Most cases can be treated as any other laceration. You can see our videos on those. Internal bleeding from trauma to the head is much more serious, however. Danger signs include convulsions, worsening headache over time, nausea and vomiting, bruising around the eyes and ears, this is called raccoon sign, bleeding or leakage of fluid from the ears and nose, confusion or drowsiness, one pupil more dilated than the other due to nerve compression, and of course an indentation to the skull. A head injury that results in changes in brain function, even for a very short period of time, is called a concussion. Loss of consciousness is not necessary to make this diagnosis, contrary to what a lot of people believe. As a matter of fact, most concussions are not associated with loss of consciousness. Nevertheless, the victim will merit close observation. If brief loss of consciousness does occur, the patient will usually awaken somewhat foggy and they may be unclear as to how the injury occurred or the events shortly before or after. They'll appear sluggish or tired in many cases. Now, the effects are usually temporary, but can include headaches, which is the most common symptom, ringing in the ears, having your bell rung, so to speak, dizziness, and problems with concentration, memory, balance, and coordination. Although concussions usually are caused by a blow to the head, they could also occur when the head and upper body are violently shaken, as you might see in some cases of child abuse. Terrible. Now, if modern medical care is available, you should already have called emergency medical services. Now, it's going to be important to be certain that the patient, once awake, has regained normal motor function. In other words, make sure that they can move all of their extremities with normal range and strength. Oops, sorry, bud. Even so, rest is prescribed for a day or so so that they may be closely watched. Acetaminophen should be given for headache instead of aspirin ibuprofen due to the risk of bleeding into the brain. Now, it's okay to let your patient get some sleep. Believe it or not, you can let them go to sleep. Once asleep, it might be appropriate, however, to waken them every two or three hours, say, to make sure that they can be aroused without difficulty and have developed none of those danger signs I mentioned earlier in the video. Now, in most cases, a concussion causes no permanent damage if further trauma is avoided. Multiple episodes of head trauma over time, however, as in the cases of boxers or other, other athletes, football players, things like that, if you've read that about in the news, can lead to long-term brain damage. This can manifest as memory deficits, personality changes, sleep disturbances, seizures, convulsions, psychological problems such as depression, disorders of taste and smell, sensitivity to light and noise, and other long-term effects. Now, the most likely way to avoid head injuries, wear your seatbelt while you're driving, or some head protection whenever you do any activities like biking, for example, that could lead to trauma and accidents. Now, if you have a concussion, don't go right back on the field. It could cost you down the line. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching.